pit fish. I never really was very good at football. I find it slightly harder when the football's got a massive hole in it. I think it might be a flower pot. Don't forget. Just, 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 just remember. All right. Banjul, banjul. Let's see what we can see. Why did the chicken cross the road? <laughs> okay, the gags will not get better. Let's see what we can find. As we travel round, the capital, the capital, yes, this is a capital city, the smallest capital city in Africa, the smallest capital city of the smallest country in Africa. That is ridiculously cute. Basically feels like any other small town or village in the Gambia. And that's why it's worth looking at. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. It's, I don't know, 33, 33 degrees, I'd say. And um, I am sweltering. Oh. But uh, I think I'm getting broody. No, but I'm gonna try and give you a little tour of what's going on. So in there we've got uh, sewing machines whirring away. Let's see what we've got here. Ah yes, one of Gambia's finest hair salons. I just saw a woman blow drying a mannequin. Not in there, unfortunately, but these are the things that you might come across. This well-painted speed hump. No, you won't. That's why you don't drive at night because you can't see them. Also, why you don't drive drunk, and definitely why you don't drive drunk at night for the for the double whammy of danger. Hello, wrong side of the road. Never an issue. So we're going into town. We'll see buildings that have just started everywhere. And the reason is that basically, it's very difficult to get a loan. You can get one, but the interest rate is about 25%. So what people do, rather than try and get mortgages, every time they've got some money, they'll just build a bit more of their house. This is quite similar in a lot of African countries. So if you do see a lot of just shady brickwork, half done, that's why. This minibus is gonna do a frantic maneuver. Guy's on his way to the mosque. Whoa, careful, buddy. He's still trucking. I won't get a thank you. I've got a thank you! Love it. Right. The beautiful old Mercedes still rumbling away. Some in good condition, some not so much. You get bonus points if you see one without a bumper. That's what we're really looking for. Just realised that talking and driving is slightly harder than the usual driving, and driving isn't that easy. But I'm sure we'll work it out. I'm used to it now. Day one. Okay, there's the police, so we're just going to stop talking and diddly dee, just look the other way, diddly dee, ba da da da, diddly dee, didn't see a thing, Governor. Nothing to see here. Nothing wrong with what we're doing, but it does draw a bit of attention to yourself having an idiotic camera on your head. You will not see that in the Gambia, unless it's attached to a fairly silly white man like me. Uh, giving way is optional. It's very difficult to know whether you should or shouldn't really. There's no road signs. I think the rule, generally speaking, is if you're small, you're not going to win. smaller than everyone else, so I tend to let them go. Plus, I'm never in a hurry here. Nor is anyone else, for that matter. I'm coming into the more market area now. There's a guy selling Fez hats over there. Beautiful. Little green grocer there. Someone doing uh, Western Union money transfers. A little interesting fact for you, about 5 to 10% of the population of the Gambia live abroad, so all these Western Union transfers is exactly where people to go go to pick up the money. There we go, look at that. Beautiful. Who needs petrol? Off and running in no time. Um, yeah, a lot of those uh, Western unions are exactly where people come to um, pick up
pick up the money that's sent from all over the world to this sadly slight, slightly uh, poor country. Poor, but not... Uh, it might be poor financially, but it's not poor in any other way. I bloody love this place. Absolutely love it. Never boring. Always friendly. Totally safe. Unless you're on a motorbike. could do a cheeky toot, but I don't, I'm so British, I can't possibly offend anyone. I'll do one now, now, now that I won't offend anyone. Hello, Hello brother. I'm not sure what he's saying, but I'm not going to hang around. So we're into the market area, it's very quiet actually for a Gambian market, coming towards the end of the day. Hustle and bustle is somewhat over. If you want to see these things, manic, come on sale day. Whoa. So you'd never know this was a capital city, would you? Well, hopefully you've got a flavour for it. Lovely fresh bananas, optional roundabout. We'll be going down this way. Um, I don't think I've seen any animals walk out in the street, but hopefully in my other videos you've seen that. Oh no, here's a convoy. I'm not getting in the way of these bad boys. I don't know who they are, but it smells a bit like government to me. won't be messing with them. The government, sadly, in this country is corrupt. Um, I just had a very interesting chat with a guy in a restaurant who says he thinks it's getting worse. Classic story of Africa. We had um, a dictator come in. Well, actually, we had an elected prime minister come in and then change his... president, sorry. Um, then change his term so that he could uh, be in for a bit longer. The classic Putin so many other dictators around the world, he hung on and went a bit bonkers. And now he's uh, not doing the economy any good whatsoever. Um, but it should be a very... Sorry, dude, I'm loaded. Um, it should be a very good economy here, by all accounts, because they've got... Uh, go on, I'm getting very nerdy, but I might as well tell you, they've got aquifers underground, loads and loads of water, so this whole place could be... And, to a degree is a very fresh arable land that they could really dig down on that. Now I see why taxis, taxi drivers talk a lot. I didn't know I could do this. Apparently I can just keep rabbiting shit till the sun goes down. But I think we'll leave you there before I kill that woman. Um, I think we'll leave you with a snapshot there of the golden hour, the sun going down. There's a couple of goats. Thank goodness we saw that. African town isn't an African town without some goats and uh, yeah I think we'll leave you there hopefully you got a good snapshot oh actually since we're it's, it's in the distance why not show you this as well this archway way in the distance is the independent archway when Gambia became independent from Britain because apparently Britain um, I don't know if you know this but they were a little bit arsehole -y love taking over parts of the world but when Gambia got its independence from the United Kingdom from us if you want um, they had an Independence Day celebration and to do so they built this archway and uh, I was just going to do a bit of dodgy overtaking and have a look at it because I'm running out of stuff to tell you KTM 120 has been maxed out at 65 kilometres an hour there. The Independence Archway. It's not often you see a load of seating on a roadway like this. But it makes sense, because when they had the Independence Parade, I should imagine government officials sat up there feeling very happy about it. And now it kind of looks a bit North Korean now because um, they love all that don't they? Tanks driving down the road while people sit down and watch it. But there you go there's your archway. Some Doric columns for you column spotters and when I get round this roundabout I will 
bid you adieu because it gets a little bit boring now and um, we slowly turn into white man's town. Hello ladies. Yeah, down this way is the most touristy part of the Gambia, uh, which is frankly a bit boring because it's just lots of large hotels, so we won't be looking at that. I'm sure we've all seen that business before. Gambia, can't say enough good about it. Come here, it's safe. It's a lot cleaner than a lot of neighbouring countries. The river's beautiful, the people are friendly, there's colours everywhere, it's never boring. Love it. Hey there. When I first booked this trip, I kind of wanted to go to Mali and Mauritania because I'd heard about this mystic Dogon architecture and it sounded kind of interesting. Then I found out those pricks, Boko Haram were there in some parts and it's a bit, little, little bit dangerous. I wanted to book somewhere that was still really interesting and somewhere I hadn't been before, but didn't have the potential of a kidnapping. So I booked Senegal and the Gambia, and uh, I was certainly right on one thing, safety. I felt completely safe at all times, way safer in fact than London. It's just got a lot going for it really, I think. Tourism wise, you know, there's a, the obvious beaches are beautiful and uh, taking river cruises is gorgeous. But really for me, that's not really about this. Hiya. It's, it's more about the fact that in a weird way, it kind of reminds me of childhood. Because kids can still play in the street, and they still do, evidently. And that sort of, in many ways, it's kind of like going back in time. Thanks for watching this bunch of videos. And as the sun goes down on Senegal, and the ladies walk off into the night, um, I think there's a wedding down the road. I can hear a lot of bongo drumming, so I'm pretty sure that's where they're going. But yeah, as they disappear off into the night, so do I. Here's a man smoking a cigarette that looks like he's angry with me. So I'll just stop. It might just be his resting face. He did look a bit moody, you know? If his resting face is, I'm going to crush you with my bare hands, that might be a, a slight disability in life. Um, all right, so, in conclusion, I've spent a couple of weeks in the Gambia and Senegal and here I am back in Mbor about to take a flight out tonight. Travelled a lot um, and it's been brilliant, no problems, absolutely no security issues whatsoever. Giving away a bag of clothes today was actually difficult. The bag kept coming back to me because the kid I gave it to didn't realise that it was a gift. Um, and a couple of times things have happened like for once a cable fell out the back of my bag and the kid picked it up and ran over to give it to me. Probably wasn't worth much, but still, you know, it's just they are desperate to look after you. And a lot of people have warned me about security issues that just haven't really come true. So on a ferry, some guy said, please be careful, make sure you zip up your bag um, because someone could steal something. No one tried to steal anything, but the fact that other members of the public were looking after me says a lot about this place. So, Senegal and Gambia, two very different countries, but just the warmth and the hospitality and friendliness of the people on the street and, and wandering around is, is exceptional. And even, even if, obviously, I'm a bit of an extrovert and a bit of a prick, so that's all very well. I like talking to people. But even if you're not, like, just to spend time here in the warmth and the colour and the madness of the markets, and all the things that it's got to offer here, the natural beauty of the rivers in Gambia. Hello. Hello. And the, uh, the beaches in Senegal, and the vast open fields, and drinking bayabat juice, and um, looking at, at the um, incredible wildlife. Like Gambia, for example, has some of the best bird watching in the world. Um, the, all that and a hell of a lot more are 
what makes this place brilliant and I really highly recommend it. What a trip, a couple of weeks and I feel so alive. It's been such a good buzz. Thank you so much to the amazing hospitality of the people in Senegal and the Gambia and for you for watching. If you like sunshine in winter, then this is the place for you. If you like beaches, then this is the place for you. If you like rivers, if you like taking river cruises, if you like fishing, if you like doing mangrove cruises, if you like wildlife, if you like bonkers markets full of energy and vibrancy, then the Gambia and Senegal are countries for you. If you like safety, then these countries are for you. If you dislike health and safety, then these countries are for you. I don't think I've worn a seatbelt in two weeks. I don't think I've seen a seatbelt in two weeks. Um, and I think the fact that when you rent a motorbike, it doesn't have mirrors because someone's physically put them out of their normal place and wrapped them in bubble wrap is a very good metaphor for the madness of this part of Africa. Come here, enjoy it. I can't recommend it enough.